Spinal cord stimulation technologies are fast advancing. This paper looks at the level 1 and level 2 evidence for the safety, efficacy and cost effectiveness of traditional spinal cord stimulation in both back and limb pain. It then moves to review the three recent pivotal papers in the newer technologies and waveforms being dorsal root ganglion spinal cord stimulation, the burst waveform and high frequency 10 known as HF10. The accurate study was the US pivotal non-inferiority randomized control trial comparing dorsal root ganglion stimulation to traditional stimulation. With an N of 152, it demonstrated that 93% of the DRG group achieved their primary endpoint of greater than 50% pain reduction in the complex regional pain and causalgia groups. This was achieved in only 72% of the traditional group. This demonstrated non-inferiority and superiority. The Sunburst paper was a prospective randomized control trial comparing both the burst and traditional waveforms in an enriched patient cohort. This had an N of 121 and the mean difference between the two groups was 6 out of 100 VAS points which is, does not meet the minimal clinical important difference. The Sensor randomized control trial was the first ever RCT comparing two spinal cord stimulation systems with HF10 versus traditional spinal cord stimulation in a N of 198 patients. It found that with the primary endpoint of greater than 50% back pain at three months, 82% of the HF10 patients achieved that compared to 42% of the traditional stimulation group. Hence, both non-inferiority and superiority was demonstrated. Further, HF10 was shown to be superior for leg pain and all primary and secondary endpoints. This is unheralded data demonstrating that we can now treat back pain in this very complex group. This paper reviews the current scientific evidence and supports the use of traditional spinal cord stimulation, but further reviews the newer technologies of dorsal root ganglion and HF10 stimulation. These newer therapies have demonstrated non-inferiority and superiority, bringing unheralded evidence that we can now effectively treat low back pain along with complex leg and focal areas of pain. With these evolutions, we've also seen lower incidence of side effects and complications. In conclusion, spinal cord stimulation should now be considered earlier in the treatment continuum and not as an end-stage salvage therapy.